Well, here is a comment from uh, someone who uh, says they have a humorous story to tell about their journey. And uh, they said, uh, I began 15 months ago to overcome my type 2 diabetes. I had an A1C of 8.9, very high. I told my doctor what I intended to do, and he was very doubtful. But he mentioned that I didn't have anything to lose. (laughs) So I guess that's better than just saying, well, don't do it. He's like, well, you're not doing well now, so if this can help you, maybe it'll be a good thing. However, this individual says it did not take very long before I caught his attention. I've never tracked my weight loss over this period because that was not my main goal. And uh, I agree. I do not think weight loss should be your main goal, although it's a good goal and uh, it's normally going to come along just uh, as an incidental to doing the low-carb diet. Uh, But anyway, he says, uh, I had to empty, or she, I'm not sure if this was a man or a woman, I had to empty my entire wardrobe into the church's thrift store in the past year. Clothes wouldn't fit anymore. So even if you're not weighing yourself regularly, when your clothes are all hanging on you and they're too big, you know you've lost some weight, right? I only have a few items to wear now because the process hasn't reached its target quite yet, and I won't refill my closet until I get there. Well, that's kind of a good problem to have. So they've just got a few clothes they're wearing because they don't want to buy a new wardrobe until they get to their target. My doctor was amazed by my progress, which he revealed at my last exam, uh, my, my last exam with the announcement that my A1C was now down to 5.5. Now, keep in mind, it was 8.9. Now it's 5.5. So he went or she went from severely diabetic, uh, major diabetes to under the pre-diabetes limit. He chuckled at me and said, if I'm able to maintain this for the long haul, I should consider writing a book. (laughs) Now, what comes after what this person replies is what I love. I simply chuckled back at him and replied, there are already hundreds of them written. We just have to get people to read them. So the doctor's like, wow, you've done so well. You ought to write a book. He's like, they're all over the place, doc. And he's right. It's It's kind of funny the the idea, the understanding, the wisdom of beating diabetes through a low carbohydrate program and time restricted eating is so uh, common. I mean, it's just out there. You can find it easily. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it in bookshelves and bookstores. Uh, But sadly, this doctor was shocked. And you have to know that this was not the only diabetes patient that he had. Yet he just wasn't seeing anybody beat diabetes. Now, this individual went from an 8.9 to a 5.5. So that is a little bit over three full points in whatever long it was. They said, uh, I began 15 months ago, so I guess a little over a year. And uh, sometimes the best thing is to do it gradually. But in any case, a three-point drop, the doctor is like, wow, you, you really need to write a book about this. He's like, doc. It's everywhere. The books are out there, and they sure are. Uh, This is the best-kept secret that's not really a secret at all in the health world. The knowledge that you can beat diabetes, you can reverse diabetes, you can reverse those numbers. You've been crawling up to your diabetic level for years now, and you can get back sometimes in six months, sometimes in a year, sometimes in four months. But you can get back to levels that are normal and that are not pre-diabetic. And basically, almost anybody can. The only difference is if you're a type 1 and you your pancreas isn't working anymore, then yeah, you'll have to take insulin, but you can still get good numbers. In fact, <laughs> some type 1s have better numbers than uh, many type 2s. So anyway, this is a secret that's not a secret. It's everywhere. Uh, there are a lot of good books. I've written a few. Dr. Fung has a great book called The Diabetes Code. Uh, Dr. Barry has a book called Lies My Doctor Told Me. I haven't read it yet, but uh, knowing him, I'm sure it's a good book. So uh, the knowledge is there, and yet here's a doctor, and he's just uh, symbolic of so many doctors that don't seem to even have a clue. 
that it's really not that hard to beat diabetes if you have the right information and you have the right motivation. All right, here is an, a simple sentence, a simple statement by an individual. And uh, it's, it's not exactly profound, but it's powerful, if you know what I'm saying. He says this, and uh, I think it's well worth repeating. He says, if you don't make time for your wellness, you'll be forced to make time for your illness. Well, what he's talking about is paying the price to deal with your high glucose and oftentimes high insulin right now. And yes, there is an initial price to pay. You're going <laughs> to, your diet is going to have to be overhauled and you're going to have to make some changes and you're going to have to read and you're going to have to research. And if you want a diet that you can really live with, you're going to have to try out some recipes and learn how to be a bit of a cook yourself. A lot of people, if they just say, all right, well, I'll eat a hamburger and I'll eat a, I'll eat a, 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 a cucumber. They'll get tired of that after a while. Yeah, that'll work. I mean, I could go around the country preaching hamburgers and cucumbers, baby. Hamburgers and cucumbers, and you'll beat your diabetes. And you know what? It would work, but nobody could live with it. So you got to come up with some new recipes, some new ideas for meals, and even a few keto desserts just to keep the train rolling and keep on track and be able to live with your new lifestyle. A lifestyle has to be something you can live with. And so up front, there's a cost. There's a price to pay. Research, watching YouTube videos, doing the stuff you need to do, trying out different recipes, finding ones that will work, ones that you like, adding them to your repertoire, and discarding meals that don't work, no matter how much people will tell you that they ought to work. You know, some people will swear up and down. If you'll eat whole grain bread or Ezekiel bread, and have a nice, healthy banana and a mango, you'll be bursting with health. Well, you'll be bursting with high glucose and high insulin is what you'll be bursting with, but you're going to have to test and find that out. But you're, there is an upfront cost. He says you either pay the price for your wellness or you'll pay a price for your illness. And the price for your wellness is all upfront or mostly upfront. Yeah, you change your diet. Yeah, you learn some things. You do some research. You read some books. You watch some videos. There's a price to pay. If you think I can beat diabetes and there's no cost at all, I don't want it to hurt me. I don't want to have to do any work. I don't want to have to read any books. I don't want to have to watch any YouTube videos. I just want it to, bam, hit me. You know what? That's what I thought in my earliest days. Of course, I thought of it from a Christian perspective. I was praying God heal me. And my idea was so that I can eat ice cream again, so that I can just go back to the same diet, but fix my diabetes, fix my glucose. And God did heal me, but he showed me that the key and the path to healing was a changed diet and lifestyle, which was not really what I was wanting to tell you the truth. But now I look back and I realize it, it was the greatest thing because not only did my diabetes get fixed and my runaway blood sugar, but he saved me from a whole lot of other issues as well. And so, yeah, there's a cost, there's a price to pay up front. But, you know, once you pay that price and you start discovering those meals and a few keto desserts that you like and a lifestyle that you can live with, you say, well, this isn't so bad. And after a while, it's just second nature. You don't even see it as much of a price. I don't. My biggest price connected with my lifestyle is making these videos and the tremendous amount of time it takes. But in terms of my diet, I could easily... And I will easily go with this the rest of my life. No big deal. But there was, there was a price initially where I had to learn some things and I had to read some books and watch some videos. So you pay the price now or you will pay it later, later with amputations, with failing kidneys, with blindness perhaps, or bad vision, uh, shots in the eyes, dryness uh, of mouth, and. Uh, constant urination, constant thirst. There's all kinds of prices you will pay, failing organs. Uh, if you don't pay that upfront price, that initial cost, and after you've paid it, you're like, well, that wasn't so bad. It seems kind of tough at first, I will admit, but after a while, you're like, well, that wasn't so bad. Uh, I don't see this as any kind of a significant price at all. I had 
my uh, almost 50 years of eating junk, eating the standard American diet. And, uh, but after that, it's like, no, I can't do that. I shouldn't have been doing it in the first place because it wasn't healthy for me when I was 25, but I never realized it. So it's not like I'm making some terrible sacrifice. I'm just shifting over to a diet that's healthy, one that I should have been eating when I was 18 years old. But nobody ever told me, and I never realized. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.